explain <coughs> it, I understood it when she explained it, but then when I came home and tried to learn it, I couldn't understand it. Okay, no problem. Gene therapy for ADA deficiency, okay. And the second one was? SIRNA and RNAi. Okay, SIRNA. Oh, I think you also messaged me this question, right? Yes, sir. I'm so sorry. I could not reach back to you. I was, I was, actually, I'm very hectic these days. So the schedule is so tightly packed. I was thinking of answering it to you over messages, but then I thought, you know, we can do it in class, the next class. Sure, okay. no problem, sir. Okay, great. So to explain your gene therapy, let me first go to this question. SIRNA versus RNA. So basically, you do you understand individually what are these two? Or not? So, um, siRNA is small interfering RNA. Mm -hmm. um, it's like when there is a plasmid, you put the RNA inside. So, it mm -hmm. is interfering the um, normal RNA. <coughs> okay. So, did you attend any of the biotechnology classes that mm -hmm. I am doing in other batch? I think Arpit attended a couple of them. Did you attend that? No. So, Sir, I only did uh, one class. You did one class, okay. And uh, Fatima did none, right? Yeah. No problem. So, but from your school understanding, I can see that you understand it quite well. So you understand what is siRNA. You said small interfering RNA. And you understand what is RNAi also? Uh, RNA uh, interference. Yes, it is the process. So if I tell you how to remember it so that you never get confused between the two, is RNAi is the process. This is what we want to achieve. Okay. RNAi means gene, it is a it is a method of gene silencing. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> My voice might be a quite quite coarse, so please bear with it. And if I'm not audible clearly, just let me know. Okay. So RNAi is the process by which we Silence a gene. Now, you know from, we have studied in genetics that there is a central dogma, right? Every piece yes. of information which is there in the form of genes in DNA has to be transcribed in the form of an mRNA, right? Yes, sir. And we also studied the, uh, um, uh, we also studied the, uh, what should I say, levels at which gene expression can be regulated, right? You can regulate it at the level of replication or at the level yeah. of transcription or post-transcriptional modifications, or also you can regulate it at the level of translation, right? So remember at the level of transcription, one thing was that if you don't allow the RNA, which is formed to go and bind to ribosomes, correct? There, I just told you this, that if you don't allow the RNA to go and bind to ribosomes, so ribosome can never translate it into proteins. So we have transcribed a gene, but we will never be able to express it in terms of protein. Correct? Yes, sir. So how do we do that? One way is, remember RNA is a single-stranded molecule? Yes, sir. So single-stranded means it's <clears throat> more reactive and less stable, correct? Yeah. If you provide a, comp let's say the this is a single-stranded RNA, it will have some, code, like it will have a sequence, let's say it's, ATGC, ATGC. So if I provide this RNA with a complementary, another single stranded RNA, then what will happen? They will bind together by hydrogen bonds. Exactly, because base pairing will happen. So here it has to be TACG, TACG. You understanding, Arpit? So this yes. is a very important, very good question which <coughs> she has asked. So you can also game with it. So what will happen? Instead of a single stranded RNA, now it will become a double stranded RNA. I made one mistake here. Can you? Can anyone? Can anyone of you tell me what is the mistake? It's not double helical. No, no, it is double helical, but there is no T in RNA. So I should have written. Oh, you. Um, yes, A U G C and A U G C. So it has to be U, right? So if I'm yes. making a double-stranded RNA, in that also there has to be uridine instead of thymine because thymine is present only in the DNA. So now it is a double-stranded 
RNA and it is stable. And it, if it is double stranded, it is closed. Now remember in ribosomes, there was a site where RNA used to go and bind. And then three codons were read at a time in the smaller subunit of ribosome. P site? A and the P site, right? In the smaller yeah. subunit of the ribosome. So there, that was called the anticodon loop. Remember that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So the anticodon loop needs to bind with the mRNA. And for that, the mRNA has to be single stranded. But what we did, whatever gene we want to silence, we will make a, we can do RNAi, RNA interference for that gene. So we know that gene sequence. We know that we will also know that genes transcript, which is the mRNA, that mRNA ka sequence. So we will make a complementary mRNA to that mRNA, put it in the plasmid, because you know that plasmid is the vector to do any biotechnological thing inside the cell, right? For genetic engineering or for genetic modification, whatever piece of DNA or RNA we want to send inside a cell, we can do it through plasmid, correct? Yes, sir. So now we will make a complementary RNA, put it in the plasmid and send it inside the cell where or um, where uh, we can also put the DNA and we can make sure that that plasmid gets replicated and transcribed inside the cell, makes that RNA. But the whole point is that our exogenously prepared RNA should go and bind to the endogenously synthesized transcript inside the cell. Now the gene will be silenced. Even there are multiple copies transcribed from the DNA, it will not show its effect. You understand? Yes, sir. Is it clear? Both Arpet and Fatima? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So that process is called RNAi. Now siRNA is the tool it is exactly the RNA that Fatima described that we are creating. This is the tool for this process. Do you understand? It is small interfering RNA. You can also remember it as silencing RNA. SI. You can remember it as silencing RNA, which will go and do RNAi inside the cell. Is it clear, Fatima? Yes, sir. Thank you very much. So no confusion between <clears throat> see it and tell me. Yes, sir. No confusion. Perfect. Now let's come to your second question then. So it has two aspects. One is gene therapy and one is ADA deficiency. So do you know what is ADA deficiency? Yes, yeah, sir. Yes, so let's talk first about the ADA deficiency. What do you know about ADA deficiency already? ADA deficiency, it is uh, when <coughs> a gene is deleted and mm -hmm. because the gene is deleted, adenosine deamino, deaminase is not produced and yes. that and adenosine deaminase is, is very important. For Sorry, what did you say? Which gene? It is a gene on the 20th chromosome. That's what I know. Yeah, but what will be the gene? The gene for adenosine deaminase. Exactly. And if oh. there is an A is in the end, what does it mean? What is it? It's, it's an enzyme. enzyme. It's an enzyme. So we and have a gene. Is... Yes, we have a gene for an enzyme whose name is adenosine deaminase. So obviously it will be a protein. So what needs to happen is that this gene should get transcribed and then it should get translated and this enzyme this protein should be formed inside the cell. Now you can also tell me with this word the function. Can you tell me the function? I know the function, but I didn't know that it is related to the name. So the function is to yeah. uh, remove the toxic, the harmful toxic from metabolism, uh, the from the by uh, the byproducts of metabolism. Yes, but how? The name says adenosine deaminase, decarboxylase, dehydrogenase, deforestation, deterioration. Removing um, aminase? Of course. And from what? Adenosine. Adenosine, right? You know, adenosine is very important, not just in the metabolism, but also for our immune system to be very functional because 
that is the molecule that we use to make adenosine triphosphate atp right yeah yeah so now can you link that ada deficiency is going to make a very big problem in the in immune the system in the immune system okay so what it causes is <clears throat> it is a inherited disorder that damages the immune system and causes severe immunodeficiency uh, syndrome like uh, conditions okay it's called severe combined immunodeficiency so it's combined because it has multiple it, it has effects in multiple layers starting from your basic because we need energy to make antibodies we need energy to fight with the pathogens right yes sir so people who have this issue this ada deficiency also known as skid s c i d have you heard of this term also ada deficiency people have skid so disorder is called skid it means severe combined immunodeficiency just like aids acquired immunodeficiency syndrome this is also a condition severe <clears throat> it's not a um, um, std though but it's severe combined immunodeficiency so people who have this they lack all immune protection so they cannot protect themselves from any bacterial or any viral or any fungal or any protozoan any attack per se so you can understand that the person is so vulnerable to it can die with even a small infection right so it's a very yes. big problem so you cannot the only solution to this is so why is it happening because as you said there was a gene for adenosine dmnas which got deleted deleted or mutated or you know it could be deleted mutated or because of any other effect it's not expressing right but whatever it is it is genetic but sir if it is mutated yeah. then don't you think that it will uh, make a bigger problem and code for some other protein and then <laughs> yeah <clears throat> yes yes and then problems can happen yeah you are right you are right so even so let's say if something mutates something was responsible for helping in your immune system it got mutated now it's doing something else but whatever it is doing it is not helping your immune system now right so even that is one thing but then it can yeah. be do, doing something else which is harmful yes so there are many types of mutations uh, which we studied so some mutations are called miss sense mutations some are called non sense mutations and so, so miss sense mutations is where Non-sense mutations is where it, the mutation does not make any sense. It can lead to, like, uh, for example, if it's happening in this ADA deficiency enzyme gene, it can lead to not functioning of this enzyme. But it does not have any other, like, because one mutation may or may not change the property of a protein. Maybe the protein which is forming is just getting degraded because it has no function. It's like mutation is. remember how i what analogy i gave to you to understand mutation it's like there is a painting every gene is like a painting right yes sir you just close you your eyes take a with tea. another color yeah and just take a paint brush close, close your brush. eyes dip it randomly into any paint and just touch on the painting so 99% of the time you will end up destroying the painting yes sir very very rarely it will happen that uh, you dipped into something and made something better or changed something but still it has some function so that can also what you are saying can also happen but it's rare okay in case of ada deficiency mostly it's deletion <clears throat> or it is so what i am saying is that it can code <coughs> for protein which is harmful for us all the proteins which are miscoded most of them also get misfolded and all the protein which are misfolded they are all harmful to us so our body has a mechanism known as ubiquitination so this is beyond your scope of your syllabus our body can recognize which protein is harmful and which protein is useful or which protein is not properly folded so if that improper fold is due to problem in the folding machinery they will try it again but if that improper fold is due to mutation in the protein due, due to which it is not folding properly so either it can create like you said another disease condition okay do something else harmful which is which is a add on effect so not working as a adenosine dmnase itself is very detrimental to the system now you are saying that whatever it became it is also monster so there are two monsters combined now so you are going to die 
faster simple yeah okay sir has there been any case like this uh not that i am aware of i uh, have not read about uh, ada deficiency in that detail like the research component of it but um mostly it it's like the fact that you do not have adenosine deaminase itself is very detrimental i'm not sure whether ada mutation in the gene leads the uh, leads to giving the protein any other function which is harmful but okay. sir there are so many therapies for this yeah. so the person the can therapy, still live. yes the person can still live yes so the therapy is now the so many therapies mean what do you mean by so many therapies that uh, means like three <laughs> means like three therapies like one of them is like you can uh, give adenosine deaminase yeah the other one is like bone marrow transplant and the other one is gene therapy yes right so all, if you see all these three therapies basically one is a real therapy one is not a therapy it's just substitution for example if someone does not have hemoglobin or low hemoglobin or the blood does not have rbcs or the blood is not making rbcs what you do is you do blood transfusion and give them rbcs after every some interval right so yes, you make dm adenosine deaminase it's an enzyme and then you send it in the system okay and the person will do good it's just like you don't make insulin so take insulin injections from outside but sometimes this might not work because of the body not accepting that adenosine deaminase it's in it as its own particle you know it can still be a foreign uh, it can still show some <clears throat> reactions second which you said is bone marrow transplant which is another way of saying that you are trying to change the bone marrow in a way where it starts making this at least bone marrow the cells of the bone marrow starts making this enzyme third is gene therapy now when we say gene therapy gene therapy in recent times have is the only kind of treatment for many rare and severe types of genetic disorders so do you understand what is gene therapy that is what i wanted to know means the mechanism of gene therapy for ada deficiency <coughs> okay so gene therapy is basically it allows a kind of a treatment an opportunity to treat ada by, by reducing the risk of side effects so other kind of treatments that we studied bone marrow transplant and giving um, pre synthesized adenosine deaminase from outside they all have some side effects right but in gene therapy what we do is like we take lymphocytes okay from the blood and then you culture it in vitro and then a a functional ada cdna so you know cdna what is cdna yes a complementary complementary DNA. dna right so you because this gene was missing from the person so what you take what you do you in uh, you put some cdna in your plasmid vector into these cells which are being cultured outside the body okay you can use a vector it could be a plasmid vector or it mostly it is with the vector if i'm not wrong the vector which is used for ada is a retroviral vector viruses have a very good success rate in sending gene or dna inside the cell as we all know this is how they infect right so if i can use a virus as a vector i can just i have i have i just have to pack my gene of interest or cdn of But interest sir, yeah uh, already the immune system is very weak if you send a virus inside then yeah, it, it it's a vector virus we have created that it is empty it does not have its own genome so it cannot do anything Okay. okay so we remove the virus genome of course we cannot send a virus no it's it's just killing the person so we remove the viral genome and we pack our gene of interest into that okay so it's a retroviral vector then you allow those lymphocytes to grow with that cdna so that cdna will get incorporated or will get st or will start producing rna and protein which is adenosine deaminase after some time these lymphocytes are taken back and you introduce it back into the patient this is called ada gene therapy is it clear so i do so, not understand okay so the the 
the patient with ADA deficiency did not has this gene, right? Yeah. So this was the DNA, but there was no gene. So let's say this gene should have been here. Now if there is no gene. The gene DNA will be constant, but just to make you understand that gene is missing, right? Yes. As a result of which it is not making adenosine DMNAs in its body. Correct? Yes. Now, if it's an enzyme, if it comes into the bloodstream, you know that it can get circulated, right? Yeah. Good. So you also understand that we can use vectors. You have studied in your uh, textbook plasmid vectors. We can also yeah. use retroviral vectors. It's, it works similar to the plasmid vector, but you know that there is a vector which has a space where we can fill our gene of interest, right? Yes. Yes. So I will fill here the gene for adenosine DMNAs. Okay. A yes. CDNA. So this plasmid is from where? Taken from where? The plasmid created. So like if you're saying the natural source, it, if Plas mostly plas we use plasmids from E. coli, which is PBR322, which is the most common. So it is accepted by the body? It is it is a plasmid. So it 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 will go inside the body, the cells. So we are not directly it's, sending the plasmid into the body. Yes, right. But uh, we are not sending the plasmid directly into the body. What we are doing is, so first we created this recombinant DNA. Is that clear? Yes. The gene which was missing, we this is that gene of our interest in a plasmid. It can also be a retroviral plasmid, which I think is the case in case in in DNA gene. Oh, sorry, ADA gene therapy. So it's a retroviral vector. Whatever, whatever vector it is, it is carrying our gene. You have to understand that. Now, since we cannot introduce it directly into the body, what we will do, we will take some lymphocytes from the patient. Now, you know what are lymphocytes? Yes, sir. Yes, what are lymphocytes? The word it lympho and the word sites. Yes. It is present inside in the immune system. It's present in the blood also, right? Yes. <clears throat> it is it, it is a part of our immune system. It is very important cells that shape our immune system. B lymphocytes and T lymphocytes you must have studied, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, I have I've have, I've have told you about this in this chapter only. So we take these lymphocytes, we culture them on the plate. So this is there plus lymphocytes. So we take lymphocytes from the patient's body, we culture it on the plate, then we put this vector in the lymphocytes that we are culturing. Okay. Yeah. Now, when this plasmid will go into the lymphocytes, this, this uh, gene will also go inside. So this so cell is cultured, uh, like it is taken out of the body. Then yes. it is cultured with the cDNA. It is cultured first. Already cultured. Culturing, culturing simply means just providing it nutrition so that it can replicate and become more and more cells. Simple. You can so culture culturing is done after putting cDNA or before putting cDNA? Sorry, the plasmid. Yes, you you would like to first grow it in a substantial amount, then put the plasmid and then still make it grow. So culturing is with the cDNA. But isn't it easy to first, uh, like after you take this uh, lymphocyte, you hmm. can... It, uh, it, is. it is. So in we can take, but the thing is, I'm just telling you practical implications. The amount we can take from a human body, we would like to replicate it more and more so that when we give it back, we are sure that the DNA is going inside. And also, we so scientists create replicates. It's not like you took some lymphocytes and when you were trying to put cDNA inside it, in that process, these 20 lymphocytes died and then you're like, oh, sorry, I need to take it again from your body. So it's better you take 20, make it 100, then divide it into five batches, introduce cDNA, then make it replicate, again make 100. So now you have 500. Do the gene therapy one with 100. If it works, okay. You can do another time, another shot of gene therapy with another 100, right? Yes, sir. Make sense, Fatima? <clears throat> yes, sir. So these are all very good questions, but you are asking about the details. But you, do you understand the concept overall? So we are putting this into the lymphocytes, culturing it, then we are putting this back into the patient. So the patient is an embryo, right? No, the, the patient uh, is a is a living patient, not an embryo. If no. you are doing it in if you are doing it in an embryo, 
then um, for that if you know that the embryo already has ADA deficiency at, at which stage of the embryo are doing it. I don't think the gene therapy at the embryonic stage is very, very successful in case of ADA patients. So mm. if this is done in an actual patient, so this um, lymphocytes are put inside the patient. So mm. will it, will the lymphocytes, it means the lymphocytes are not permanent. They will die in like uh, some months, right? But they will divide, right? They will synthesize by that time. They will also synthesize. They will divide, right? Yeah. What we need is the so gene is product. Permanent? We need that protein, adenosine deaminase. Is this it's permanent? It's not permanent. It's not like you do it one time and it's done. But you said they divide. Yeah, they divide, but they also die, right? So after some time, the it's like the intensity can go down and then you need another shot of the gene therapy. But you understand we are sending a gene here. So now the yes. it has no side effect. It will have no side effect because the lymphocyte also belongs to the patient. Everything is being synthesized inside the patient. So the patient will not, you know, say no to anything. Everything is happening in the body. It's like they are synthesizing everything inside the cells. So nothing is foreign. Correct? Yes, sir. Yeah. So this is the gene therapy for ADA deficiency that, that is done. So we learned this for uh, embryo. embryo. Also. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Can you so in embryo, basically, uh, it, it can be done at different stages. Now, if we know that the embryo has still not formed a blood vascular system or things like that, but it's a very early embryo, and you got to know about this gene deletion very early, then we can introduce that into the, uh, the embryo itself. But the point is the success Right, there is very less because we cannot take an embryo out, do the gene therapy and then put it back in because it's tied with the placenta. Can we not take its uh, lymphocyte? An embryo has not formed lymphocytes yet, right? That is what I'm saying. Lymphocyte is formed when you have a blood system, you have an immune system. So first an embryo is just a bunch of cells. Yeah. Yeah. If you are doing it in a late stage embryo, that is equivalent to doing it in a patient because if an embryo has developed everything, it will have this ADA deficiency in itself. Then what you are doing in the patient, the same thing you will do in the embryo then. So you will have to do it again and again. In embryo, if you do it at early stage, then it gets, if it gets, an inco gets incorporated in its own gene, then the solution is there. If you but if you that can, is highly impossible because so there that is, is no that is also possible. that is possible. That's why it's in, there's nothing like highly impossible in science. So, for example, in blood in bone marrow transplants, what we want is we want few cells, a subset of cells, which were missing that gene, to now have that gene. That's all. That's all we need. They will divide, they will repopulate, and they will start producing the product that we need. We don't need to change every cell of the body because there are trillions of cells in our body. So every cell will be missing that gene, but we just want few subset of the bone marrow to have that gene and keep that gene with them. So if we can manage to do that in a young adult or an embryo, gene therapy is successful and it's done. You understand? Yes. <clears throat> yeah. Because we there's, there's no way we can change <laughs> the complete, um, all the cells, all the genomes. Okay. Yes, thank you very much. Okay, very well. So we also have, oh, I think Zach joined and he left. <clears throat> cool. So uh, where did we leave in the last class? Sir, we... Yes, Arpit. Sir, I also have a doubt. Yes, please. Say so, like we also had the question in the exams, so, but I don't know. So mm -hmm. like, so it was what are the ways by which sir, innate immunity is accomplished in a newborn baby? What are the ways by which? Sir, innate immunity is accomplished in a newborn baby. Accomplished? Yes. Yes. So it's the same thing. It's accomplished by the physical barriers, physiological barriers, cellular barriers, and the cytokine barriers. So innate immunity accomplished means innate immunity works, right? It accomplishes the job it has been given. So in a newborn baby, 
where the acquired immunity is not prominent it's because the baby has, is just born and it does not have it, it has not acquired any exposure or infection from outside it it relies heavily on the first day of its birth on its innate immunity you must have seen that when 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 a new baby is born the doctors are very very you know they they don't allow everyone to just go and touch the baby right yes <clears throat> yeah so the baby for some time should be kept um in the incubator no in incubators we keep the babies who are not who are premature but a normal mature baby should also be kept and especially in times like these when we have a lot of viruses and bacteria and pandemics going around it should be kept if not in complete isolation only around the parents because right after the birth you have a series of vaccinations right that babies have to go Yes, sir. right after the birth you have vaccinations even during the gestation period mothers have to go and take some injections some antibodies that can help the baby right away so people are trying to give the babies because these antibodies can cross placenta so there are also ways by which you can give a baby a kind of adaptive immunity or a preformed immunity when it is born because you know you can understand baby these days babies these days are we are taking birth into a very very dangerous world right full of viruses infections pathogens all around us correct <clears throat> yes. yes yeah so the question that in, that came in your exam was just a twisted way to ask that how does innate immunity in a newborn baby functions so newborn baby has a skin that's the main barrier it has mucus that's the second barrier it also has uh, acid in the stomach saliva in the mouth tears in the eyes it also has leukocytes which are wbc's neutrophils monocyte natural killer cells macrophages which take care of anything that enters the baby's body and then it has cytokine barriers like uh, these interferons and interleukins these molecules help with signaling if there is any infection in the baby do you understand but yes Sir, and one more. So, yes, please. Sir, it, uh, sir, it was like, uh, what is the difference between like addiction uh, towards drug or or dependence? Like, what is the difference <coughs> between them? Addiction and dependence. Yes. Sir. So, what is the difference between addiction and dependence? You are asking. Yeah, in in context of like drug abuse. so i think it starts with addiction and it ends with dependence so addiction is where like um, your body can function without it but it needs it so addiction any kind of addiction it's not like we only are addicted to bad things we only study addiction to bad things because they are harmful so addiction to tobacco is bad addiction to alcohol narcotics psychedelic drugs is bad but addiction is also like addiction to good things like if you are addicted to you know exercising no one says that you are reading books yeah or if you are addic addicted to reading books or if you are addicted to having watch sweets. movies sweets like let's talk about something which goes inside the body you know not just behavior like something which is uh, you are also right but something which is more close to drugs so like addiction to a uh, uh, addiction simply means if we do it once we would like to do it the urge to do it again develops in the brain now how it develops is there is a limbic system in the brain right there are dopaminergic neurons which is called the reward pathway have you read about that no so there is something called reward pathway this is what anxiety does it does not tells you the basic but tells you things like addiction and dependence so there is a reward pathway which makes you you know do things over and over again when you like it so that's addiction where and also slowly it starts with addiction so what drugs do they go and bind to receptors they are basically chemicals ligands in your brain you have receptors i told you about did i tell you about no right i have not told you about those uh, just one second and this is chapter 8 right yes sir yes okay so you know there are four kinds of three classes basically opioids coca alkaloids and cannabinoids have you studied this in school at least 
Yes, sir. Yeah. yeah. Yes, yes, sir. Yeah. So these drugs have their receptors in our brain. So they get, go and bind to those receptors and bind very, very strongly. And over time, addiction is dose dependent. So addiction will tell you that if you took two grams today, you will need four grams the next day or the day after that. It will keep on increasing. Dependency is when you try to leave it. So you cannot leave it because the system is not dependent. Let me give you an example. So there are um, drugs which are given in case of anxiety and depression to treat or pe people misuse these drugs to feel good. They are called feel good drug or or uh, they give you a feeling of euphoria like cocaine, right? So when you take these drugs, you feel good, you feel happy, correct? Sometimes you feel that the world is moving in a slow motion and you feel like all the problems are just, it just vanish. But the problems didn't vanish. You are into a different psychedelic state. And after some time, you will come out of that state because all these drugs will be metabolized and the body will either degrade it, it will go to the liver, it will degrade it, or over time it will be flushed out of your body. But what will happen over time is your threshold to feel anything. Like if, for example, eating biryani makes you feel happy, then something happened, you started abusing drugs. Now to feel happy, you need two grams of that drug along with biryani. So if you don't take two grams of drug, you will not feel happy. Next time, anything happens to you which is more happier than eating biryani. For example, you achieved something. You will not be able to feel that happiness because your system is now dependent not just on external stimulus to feel happy but on a chemical drug to feel happy. Right? So these drugs are basically these chemicals are also produced in our body but in a different form, slightly different form. They are called endogenous drugs or endogenous ligands. When the same is synthesized outside and sent into the body, it is um, abusing. So how body. does this come? Uh, how is this in our body? These are all neurotransmitters. They bind to receptors. So all these drugs, which basically are abused, morphine, coca alkaloids, uh, cocaine, all these are derivatives of some common structures. So uh, let me, uh, you all have NCRT, let me open NCRT. Yes, sir. Can you go to the, that coca alkaloid and all these? What is this chapter? Eight. Yes, yes. Yes, go to page number. 158, drugs and alcohol abuse. So basically, this is what we also had to do today. So let's first do this. So you can see drugs and alcohol abuse. Can you see there is a structure of morphine? Yes, sir. Given, right? And if you go down, you will see that uh, somewhere, I think they have also mentioned, if I'm not wrong, they have mentioned in NCRT as well that... Um, just mentioned or not, but just know that many of these molecules are also produced in our body in very trace amounts, okay? Especially the cannabinoids. That's what sir, I wanted to ask. How is it produced in our body and how does it not affect when it's produced in our body? So what is the effect of cannabinoids? Can you go to the cannabinoid part and read for me the effects? So in cannabinoids, cannabinoids come cocaine, coke and crack, as you call it. So what does it do? <coughs> it is a it interacts. Stimulant. It has a potent stimulating action on the central nervous system. Do you see that? So on the cardiovascular system. On the cardiovascular system of the body. Oh, sorry. Yeah, cannabinoids, the cardiovascular system of the body. So they have a stimulating effect on the cardiovascular system of the body. How do you think normally in your body, your cardiovascular system works? In the same manner, right? We need to stimulate things in our body, right? Yes, sir. 
So if you go and look for endogenously produced cannabinoids in our body or endogenously produced alkaloids, coca alkaloids in our body, you will find that there are some of these structures similar, not exactly the same, but similar structures also produced in our body. So they just have to be similar so that they can bind to the receptor. But you can make some changes, which is called chemical engineering, make it more strongly bind and have very high effects of the same kind of effect that they normally also do. Because my question is, if this is something totally, you know, um, foreign to our body, what do you think? In our own body, we have an enzyme called alcohol dehydrogenase, right? Have you heard of this alcohol dehydrogenase enzyme? Am I audible? No, sir. Yeah, yes. you are audible, but I haven't heard. You have not heard of it. Okay. Have you? So this is an enzyme that um, uh, normally also in our body, we make many kinds of alcoholic molecules, alcohols. What is alcohol? It is any group, any carbon group, which has OH in the end, right? This is called the all group. Yes, sir. You have studied the uh, functional groups in chemistry? Yeah. Yes. OH is all there are uh, uh, retinal, which is present in your eyes. Have you studied a important component of vitamin A called retinol? Retinol is very, very important for your eyes. It makes you see. Without retinol, vitamin A, it's vitamin A. Retinol is vitamin A. We call it vitamin A, but the structure is retinol, core structure. So what is retinol as a compound, as a chemical? The name has all, ethanol, methanol, alcohol. propanol. Exactly, it's a prop. It's an alcohol. It's a useful alcohol which we are producing in the body. Correct. Now, if you have to dehydrogenase any alcohol, you need to have an alcohol dehydrogenase enzyme. It will recognize all sorts of alcohol in the body. Even the alcohol that we drink as beverage. If someone drinks alcohol in controlled quantities, the alcohol dehydrogenase will break it down to make it converted into energy good for body gives you uh, high energy makes your body heat so in very cold climate if someone is consuming alcohol in controlled quantities it's actually very helpful for that person's body but when you abuse start abusing alcohol you start putting more than your body needs or your body can break down then it becomes a drug alcohol abuse you understood fatima yeah. So how do you think that we already had alcohol dehydrogenase? Did the nature, the creator, the God knew that one day these people are going to drink alcohol? So let me put an enzyme beforehand. It must be important for the body. Exactly. So alcohols are important for the body because many alcohol, alcohol molecules are already in our body, which are serving the function. Similarly, these cannabinoids, which uh, stimulate cardiovascular system, or the coca alkaloids, which stimulate your nervous system, you know, they can also go and bind to a receptor because that receptor is present already. If you put something for which we have no receptor, that, that thing can have no effect in our body. If it is having an effect through binding to a receptor, it can have no effect, right? Yes, sir. I told you there are millions of viruses around us we inhale viruses all the time but we don't get disease because the viruses cannot bind to any of the receptors in our body and cannot recognize any of the cells so they just act like a sand particle not a problem but yeah. anything that can start showing effect by binding to receptor means that the receptor was already there so these molecules in in natural amounts is also produced by the body okay <laughs> that's why the receptor is already there that's why they can so people figured out oh if we smoke weed which is marijuana then we feel very high we feel very good and then they start abusing it to feel good all the time by smoking that's abuse but normally when your brain feels good or feels stimulated or make wants you to make uh, wants you to feel stimulated. So when you are sleeping versus when you wake up. So when you wake up, you have your CNS has to be stimulated, right? Naturally. Yeah. So body does that. 
by through these kind of ligands only binding to your cns okay so yes, like what can can we write in the exam with the question <laughs> so the questions for drugs and alcohol abuse so let's start with this only will always be like <clears throat> which kind of drugs so there are three categories okay write down either in your syllabus there are opioids so what will be asked is the drug category which is opioids why are they called opioids because they bind to specific opioid receptors present in our cns and in our git you know what is git gastrointestinal tract okay everyone so for every drug, drug category you have to study the name where it binds what it does and what are the side effects of abusing it and where it comes from like where do we derive it from what is a natural source so opioids um, commonly which is known as mac one another name is heroin it is extracted from opium poppy the natural source is opium poppy a plant okay then it is taken out from there and converted into or purified into a white odorless <coughs> crystalline powder which looks very much like salt or fine powdered sugar okay and if you mm, so morphine is another thing which comes under the opioids category you know morphine also goes and binds to our cns and it is a very good painkiller morphine is used as a painkiller then how is it also used as a drug it can be used as a drug if you um, acetylate morphine and make it heroin then it will go and stimulate your uh, system uh, and not stimulate it will go and uh, you you snort it and it will make your system very very slow it will make you uh, feel like the world is moving in a slow motion and the body's the breathing rate goes down the heart rate goes down the body feel very relaxed nothing no stress because the body is not able to process anything if you tell that person who is high on heroin that you know there is a threat run person will not be able to run because the person cannot respond to a stimulus it cannot even respond to a dangerous stimulus which is a very so uh, when our, when in our body things like these which brings us down or slow us down they act they act in a very justified manner so in our body everything is in control right when we have to sleep our system slows down when we have to wake up it again stimulates back the moment we see a tiger a dog a snake running behind us our system just goes into a flight flight or fright mode and for every state we have certain chemicals which start secreting or um, which starts degrading when not required but everything is controlled by brain but when anything you take out from uh, when when anything that you take in in the body from outside the brain is not aware of it right so it will act based on its concentration and you cannot control its effect okay so for opioid the source is opium poppy commonly known as mac heroin or morphine and <laughs> it is <clears throat> its function is that it acts as a depressant in our cns it's not a stimulant it is a depressant so it slows down all the body functions urine formation muscle contraction peristaltic movement breathing rate cardiac output everything then comes cannabinoids i hope you are writing right both of you are you writing please yes okay this is opioids now cannabinoids cannabinoids just like that it comes from cannabis sativa commonly known as marijuana or weed many products are formed from this plant so because this is a plant um, cannabis sativa so you can use the inflorescence of the plant to make weed you can use other parts of the plant also to make 
marijuana, hashish, charas, ganja, everything comes from this plant. Sir, yeah. what did you say about weeds? Weed, weed. W yeah, what did you say about it? So weed is a, it's a drug, you know, that's smoked. It's like you can, people roll it like tobacco and then it comes from, I was saying that it is also a cannabinoid. It comes from cannabis sativa. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. So for cannabis sativa, the whole plant has a lot of cannabinoids, even in the flower, in the leaves, in the resin. So depending on which part you are using of the plant, so what basically whatever you are using, you have to dry it. Then you can make a powder or you can take the latex out of it and you can combine it with other parts and make charas, ganja, hashish, marijuana, all these things. So mostly this is not snorted. This is taken by either inhalation, which is smoke or oral ingestion, like you chew it as a tablet. And they have their effects on cardiovascular system. <clears throat> so that's cannabinoids. Okay. Opioids, cannabinoids. The third is alkaloid, which is also known as coca alkaloid because it comes from the plant, which is known as erythroxylum coca. <coughs> now this plant, it's not a Asian plant. It's it's an American. And if I'm not wrong, it's South American. It's taken from which plant? Sorry? It's taken from which plant? Erythroxylum coca. Uh, let me write it here. Coca alkaloids. Erythroxylum. It's not, it's X-Y-L-U-M, not L-E-M. That is another xylem. Coca. So coca alkaloids are, so cocaine is the, you can remember it as cocaine, commonly known as coke, crack, cocaine. These are mostly snorted because they come in powdered form. So not inhaled or not smoked, they are snorted. And these chemicals or drugs can directly get absorbed from any of our neurons. So you know why they are snorted or rubbed um, in the nose? Why nose is important? Why not eat it? We have, we have a lot of olfactory neurons in our nose, right? A lot of open neurons in our nose are there. Sensory neurons, which are open. So similarly, so when we smell, you know what happens when we smell? Suppose you are smelling a rotten animal. Actually, chemicals from that rotten animal are flying, getting airborne, are in the air. They are entering in your nose and getting, they are binding to the neuron in your nose. So when people actually say that we just smelled, we didn't taste. So taste and smell biologically is the same thing. They are yeah, both so yeah, they are both receptor bindings. So similarly, it, it tells you that when you when you uh, put anything in your mouth or in your nose, it actually can bind to the neurons, sensory neurons in your nose or in the mouth, olfactory or gustatory neurons. Similarly, these drugs work. They just go and bind and can be absorbed. And then basically they go, they have to reach the central nervous system, CNS. So they have a very potent stimulating effect on the CNS. Okay. So they interfere with the dopamine neurotransmitter. They excite the CNS to a level where you start feeling that you have so much of energy. Whereas you, you might not be having so much of glucose reserves, but you feel very excited. You feel very energetic. You feel very happy and euphoric. So what happens is people often under the influence of these drugs do not eat and they get muscle fatigue, muscle breaks, 
they lose a lot of weight. All these drug addicts which are addict on cocaine, you will not find many of them very healthy. Right? Because you, you don't feel like you feel like happy, energetic, you don't feel like eating at all. So these are so scary if you actually look into them. Yeah, they are. They are. That's why drug abuse is... That's why you're reading this, you know, in, in your class. So early in your life, you should be aware of these things. So just like you should be aware of sex education, the opposite gender, contraceptives, about the diseases around you, microbes around you, you should also be aware of. This is what education is for, right? And this is where I believe that biological education is important for everyone. Whatever you go and do in your life, I think basic biological education should be given to everyone. You become a computer scientist, um, engineer, a doctor, even a, like you stay in the home, you should know how your system is working, correct? Yes. What to put in your system and what to not put in your system. Yes, so cocaine, um, you wrote um, hallucin it, and excessive dose can also cause hallucino, uh, uh, hallucinations. Because your system is so stimulated, it will start perceiving things which are not real. So people on cocaine will feel that there is a person walking. There is a train coming from the air. These are all hallucinations. You know, there are beers flying, <laughs> things like that. So they are non-real hallucinations that you get, paradoxical hallucinations. That's because of your, ex your overstimulation of the CNS. Okay. There are many other plants also with hallucinogenic properties. One is Dhatura. Have you heard of Dhatura? No. Yes, sir. Never heard of Dhatura? Bhang, Dhatura. Bhang is a different thing, but Dhatura is also has hallucinogenic properties. Yes. There are other drugs like benzodiazepines, which actually um, used as medicine. So all these drugs. Uh, they are also only not misused. They are also used, as I told you. Morphine is used. Benzodiazepine is used. Benzodiazepine is used for severe anxiety and depression treatment. There are... <coughs> so, you can read about these in your NCRT, which are useful. Benzodiazepine, barbiturates, morphine, they are useful. Coke, cocaine, heroin, hash, charash, hashish, ganja, marijuana, they are they are harmful. Okay. In nature, there are many fruits whose seeds have hallucinogenic effects. Just Which fruits are they? Just, just as a, so, I don't know their name, but, so the fruit of Dhatura for that matter, if you, if you know what the plant of Dhatura is, the, the, both the flower and the fruit have hallucinogenic properties. So people also smoke or burn and inhale the air, inhale the smoke just to get high and feel like, you know, I don't know what they feel. Okay. In fact, there is a very good article written. So many uh, cultures around, yes. The Dhatura fruit, I just checked it on the internet. It's some, it's, it has a lychee like cover and mm -hmm. it's yes, green yes. in color. Yes, it has but some inside, spiny. It has spiny. Inside it has like anar ke dane. Yes, right. That's the dura. But then. <coughs> the dura is a very common plant just growing like randomly around the roadsides. I have seen many dura plants in Delhi also. I saw them in temples, Shiva temple. You saw them in? Shave temples, like ah, used to yes, worship. yes, right, right. So, I was just about to tell you many cultures around the globe use different kind of plants, which I don't know they know or they don't know that they have hallucinogenic properties. But many cultures, even tribal cultures, where people gather in large gatherings and then there is something burning and everyone is feeling very euphoric and you know they are chanting out loud that effect. And if you'll see from a distance, you will like, why are these people doing this? Why are they behaving like this? Because they are under the effect of some hallucinogenic plant or something. So it makes you more excited. Even like in many um, uh, European and non-European countries also, the tribal cultures have these plants. So they, 
they have these ceremonies where the male has to show the vigor and strength so they have to undergo very strenuous things you know sometimes people yeah. punish themselves in many cultures and before that before punishing themselves like beating themselves or uh, you know uh, testing their limits of strength and pain so before that uh, they are made to drink something which they say is like coming from this plant or some sacred thing so isn't it like uh, like uh, how much alcohol can you consume type it's like that yes alcohol has an effect yeah like how much you can uh, resist <coughs> people do yeah. that yeah like yeah. as a competition also right they do that okay so uh, yes okay the majority of the like these drugs are produced from plants like why don't we ban these things like this also would decrease this abuse and thing yes you know in fact the question has two aspects one is biological aspect the other is political aspect tobacco and alcohol generates the very the most revenue for governments not just in india but across the globe so one thing is that second thing what they can do is they can educate you and tell you that you should not drink it but it will be available because someone can just say that i am doing this so why are you not so alcohol and tobacco for that matter they are considered very low in that harmful effects category so they are there right but in a way if you see people abuse alcohol they abuse tobacco they abuse like cigarettes all these drugs then they fall sick then they go to the medical like system hospital which is either state funded or private funded and they become a burden to society only right don't you yes, think so in a way it's very paradoxical but we cannot the question is why can't we ban them because <coughs> there are many things behind this why can't we ban them is a very difficult question i don't know why can't we ban them no the only thing they're providing is harm yeah but yeah but they are plants right how can you ban plants someone can just go not plants them. banning of alcohol or tobacco or all these harmful making of these things so for alcohol like i think alcohol bans have been imposed in many states where there's a major problem like gujarat is one of the dry states where alcohol is banned but if you if you bihar my own home state is one of the state recently which got alcohol banned but let me tell you you know if you ban something it won't deter people from using it because Absolutely. human behavior is very very complex if i tell you let's see don't open this door you will have even more the urge to open it ki kya hai let me see what is inside the door why i am banned from opening this door so i think like in my in my own personal opinion the solution is not to ban things the solution is to educate people so that they can take decisions for themselves like i know about all these things now i am educated enough to know that which things to take inside my body and which to not take inside my body right even if they are available to me or not available to me because in states where alcohol is banned there is lots of black marketing of alcohol the same alcohol which you get for 80 rupees now you are getting for 180 rupees but people are buying it because they just want to drink it regardless whether they are banned or not banned correct yes sir in india drugs are banned right we have a narcotics bureau yes sir. in america marijuana is legal in many states and you must be thinking that where marijuana is legal people are just on marijuana they are just smoking marijuana it's not like that in fact in india the country where drugs are banned you see the most black marketing because there is more scope to do business you can just raise raise, uh, raise the price and people will buy it so the most amount of drug is trafficked into india bangladesh nepal pakistan because we have audience here in america it's legal people can just grow marijuana in their backyard so why will anyone go and buy it at 5000 rupees per 10 gram no one will go do that yeah. anyone who wants to just smoke marijuana can just grow marijuana dry it and make take a butter paper make a smoke but you will see that people there are not misusing it that much which because it's banned here right so you have to do it under the table so you uh, i think education is better than banning in my own yes so, uh, the answer to arpit's question <coughs> he said why can't you ban the plants i mm -hmm. think because of biocontrol means 
even they have some importance to this world ha yeah, but we don't know we will, because when they are cultivated in large amount anyway you know agriculture is not good for biosphere growing rice wheat barley corn in very big big fields do you think it's helping our earth it's not helping earth it's deteriorating earth agriculture is one of the reasons where we are producing more carbon footprint but yes we have to do it right so that reason can get a little diluted because we still don't know in jungles what is the what marijuana is giving to the ecosystem because anyways you don't see marijuana around you right or you may see so for example <clears throat> i have seen marijuana around the place where i'm currently but these are these are <clears throat> some mutated wild or mutated varieties or maybe wild type but a different species people are not using it for hallucinogenic um, properties purposes purposes yes so the problem is i think again it comes back to you you have everything around you if anyone wants to make alcohol you can make alcohol from sugar cane and rice you know that that's called desi sharab yes but the point is why you want to do that get educated don't do it you know okay anyways so uh, you understood this part drug abuse dependency addiction another thing was withdrawal symptom syndrome if you have not studied it dependency we start calling something addiction when you would like to make it would you like to take it more and more okay but we start calling that addiction a dependency when if you try to leave it you will start having withdrawal symptoms so withdrawal symptoms is where your system now depends on that drug and if you don't take it for a day your system will go haywire your brain will start feeling anxious your hands will start shaking you will get nausea sweating you know breathing rate will differ your body will just uh, you know be but that's temporary okay. right no that's not temporary it depends what stage of dependency you have reached through your addiction in case of very severe drug addicts if you just stop their drug one day they will die of the withdrawal symptoms what yes you know how in these re rehabilitation centers any drug addict at a very later stage in very severe condition when they go to these rehabilitation centers what do they give these patients you must be thinking that they don't give them drugs you know they give them something else medicines right they give less amount of drugs exactly they give them the same drugs but they start decreasing the dose and start treating for the withdrawal symptoms over time start making their mental make makeup start like start making them feel like they mentally can you know get over this it it is a very long process so people can die with the withdrawal symptom if you just stop it and people can go to any limit you know people commit crime they kill people just to get the drug which they are addicted to there are many cases where very young drug addicts end up committing you know homicide if to the whole family they kill their own family so members if they don't get the very drug. young in the sense like teenagers if teenagers get addicted to drugs they get them they become very very arrogant paranoid when they don't get these drugs even tobacco you you must have seen no around you people so tobacco because we don't consider it something as very very big a thing i don't know why but tobacco is very harmful you know it has way more toxins that can affect our body so i have seen like around me so many people just keep smoking but then yeah. there is yeah. no like extreme side effects yeah because they they get the cigarette every day because it's available right so the extreme side effect is long, like it 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 takes time because you cannot see it does not mean there is no extreme side effect so for example the person who is smoking a cigarette feel a kick in the morning then they want this kick every morning it's not like if you they don't get it so they will become violent like druggists but this is a drug of very low caliber so they will go to the shop and buy it in the afternoon okay but after 1 2 3 4 years of smoking if you look at their lungs it is deteriorated why during the covids 
COVID situation, people who were smokers died the most because their lungs were already compromised. So you see the side effect when something like this happened, happens. So yeah, it's a gold punish thing. So, yeah. Or you can say that their own physiology punished them, right? Yeah. So I don't know if God sent Corona to just punish the smokers, but yeah. even the non-smokers died. The good people died. So, <clears throat> But you, you are at disadvantage whenever something attacks your lungs and you are a smoker. So you, that, that's where you see the side effect. So saying that I don't see any side effect is not correct. So you said that they kill their... Uh... Uh, there's yes, that I'm talking about like people who are on very hardcore drugs like cocaine, heroin. But then why? Cherish. Their own family. Yeah, because the, in that ra in that moment, the brain only wants drug. Whoever is in the way, they don't. So they forget, you know, and then they later on admit that we were not in our senses. Things like that. So, so it's not good. Withdrawal symptom can be very, very bad. It can be fatal also if it if it is very uh, severe, okay? These are very scary. Yeah, so last part in the chapter, which is one question that I have seen, it comes in the board. So what NCRT wants you to read is not just about the drugs and the scarier effects. It also wants you to understand how can you avoid it? So there is prevention and control part in the end, right? So you should read that, which is avoid undue peer pressure, education and counseling being the very major one, seeking help, looking for danger signs, seeking professional help and all these things. So you have to write these moral points in the exam if the question comes about how can you prevent or control drug abuse. Okay? Yes. Okay, so um, I think we don't have enough time now. So uh, let's do one thing. Um, in, the, in the next class, what would you like me to to should because I think we have not done AIDS and cancer, right? Have we done AIDS and cancer? No. As no. a disease. So in the next class, which is tomorrow, we'll do AIDS and cancer first, and then we'll start with uh, biotechnology as chapter. Okay. I'll first okay. start biotechnology because there is one chapter which is microbes in human welfare. It is a smaller chapter, and we can come back and revise it. In... Sure, yeah, that is a, a, a theoretical chapter. Yes, so you just have to know which microbe is used to make cheese, which microbe is used to make antibodies. Just remember the name of the microbe and where it comes from. So I think we'll first go to biotechnology, which is more conceptual a chapter. You have many concepts of... So the... after biotechnology, which chapter you'll take? Because uh, after biotechnology, continuation will be better 12th chapter. Yes, yes. I'll take